Talking to Screws podcast, episode number 90-something. We've been at this a little while now. Support for today's episode comes from True Classic. Our new sponsor is the absolute best fitting t-shirts a man can buy. Finding the right t-shirt with a little bit of a dad bod is incredibly frustrating. I'm a new dad, a little bit of a dad bod. I completely understand, and I'm wearing one right now, feeling confident reading this ad. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men finally get a better fit at an affordable price. Our listeners get access to the best deal they offer for a limited time. Only get 25% off using the promo code OTSGOLF at trueclassic.com. Trueclassic.com, OTSGOLF, 25% off plus free shipping. Enjoy the pod. Three shots, four part, I just do two, one putt, part four, birdie, woo new driver, info, replace, M2, part five, fairway, what you fin do, think I'll try to get on into, start right, good line, good view, Andrew, shoot him, make Gavin. All right, episode 97, guys, 97, pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Uh, welcoming back to the pod, Bob Winskowitz, we get it? Jeez, you're the only guys that get my name right. Oh, man, we get every name that, wrong. You know? Get every name wrong. <laughs> third time, too, I believe. Third right? Yeah, third time. Third time, so it. third time's a charm. How are you doing, Bob? Thanks for uh, joining us, man. I'm doing great. It's uh, it's always fun and a pleasure to be on the show. Thanks for having me. It's so good to be back. Um, Bryce, you're back. Were you off last week, Bryce? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were off because we were talking with uh, Rap Soto. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was work, stuck working late. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, you heard of Rap Soto? They're like a like a personal size launch monitor. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've heard about them. I don't know much about them, but I've heard about them. Pretty cool. We had them on last week. They're a pretty cool little product. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we're gonna test some of those out too, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Bob, founder, um, owner of Squares Golf, and. You've got one of the hottest players on tour right now. So we were we were texting Bob, and that's kind of like, again, we we're like, we got to have you back. Sep's been on a roll right now, kind of see how mm-hmm. things are going with you guys. And, uh, yeah, company's doing well. Everything's going good? Everything's going really well. I'm really pleased that where we're at, you know, it seems like it's been forever. It's been less than three years now. And, uh, yeah, we're having a great year, and a lot of that I, I attribute to our partnership with Sep. You know, he's given us a lot of TV time. He wins the Honda Classic. Uh, does really well in the in the players and you know makes a cut at the masters and almost when should have won the heritage you know uh and uh and then the bmw uh again you can say should have could have would have uh same thing there and then uh and then at the the, the championship uh he played really well i thought he had a chance there and uh you know had a couple of bad holes but he got a lot of tv time and uh you know, we've got the name on the collar, and every time that uh, he was lining up a putt, you'd see that. And then every time you'd see the putter down there by the shoes, you'd see the big squares logo. So, you know, it's kind of fun. You know, it's something that uh, you only hope for. You know, we've only got, you know, if you think about the odds, right, we've only got one PGA Tour player wearing our shoes. You know, we've got three on the senior tour and the champions tour, but, uh, We've only got one guy, so it was uh, it was quite uh, quite a lot of fun to watch. I sent you a text, Bob, because there was one point where Sep was on the edge of when him and Zalatoris went back to play. Zalatoris was on the right hand side, OB, um, and then he was on. I was talking to a buddy of mine from the, uh, Andrew from the Players Tour, so uh, I was like, I got to send Bob a message. Uh, this is kind of crazy, but so he's he's one foot in the water, so he's taking his shoe off and i'm thinking like you know bob is uh bob's become a friend of ours bob's the owner of squares golf and he's you know tearing his shoe off right now to put one foot in the water and the camera's like staring right at his feet and it was just like the perfect i don't know all stars align if you're a shoe owner i guess right it's if like you're, the if you're uh, a owner, it's yeah. like the nike ball tiger commercial it's like that it's yeah, like exactly. first commercial yeah yeah it was you know and I mean, my phone is blowing up. Everybody, everybody texts me, like, oh, you see a shoe, you see the shoe. And uh, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, so I heard, you know, I heard after that, I mean, if he put his foot down and he would have sunk in the mud and, you know, God knows what would have happened if he hit that ball. He made the right decision. I think everybody in the world, including myself, was hit it, just knocking up the fairway another, right. uh, you know, another five feet, 10 feet, whatever. But uh you know, ultimately, you made the right decision on that hole. Yeah, like, we don't get the information of, like, what is in the water when he's putting his foot in there. Sepp's a big guy, too. He's a big dude. Like, he's, yeah. you know, he's built like a football player, right? So, um, 
when the same thing when he was like okay like gonna take the drop or whatever and he went a little bit back so that actually at that point in time gave Zalatoris an advantage um and then he stuck it to like four feet or something so yeah i made the putt like yeah. what a pressure play and uh yeah. yeah what a good time for squares golf so um that's kind of what got us talking again bob and said like we gotta have you back things are good uh mm -hmm. things are going well so well, it could have been you know. that. Plus, I kept begging you now for the last six months to come back on the show. So that could have you probably had enough. It's of me, like right? it's like what the the <laughs> Leafs. Last time we were talking, it was the Leafs Bruins, and then they were both out in the first That's round right. of the playoffs yep. or something. Yeah. And we were like, okay, we'll have a bet on whoever makes it out of the first round, or if they meet. Like and and like Leafs fans were thinking like this is going to be a good year, and just again, just I still like every year, man. I still got buddies who are out of the group chat from that. So. Um, I'll tell you what, if you're I, listening I, I, right yeah. now, come back. We miss you guys, uh, but like it's it's gonna probably be the same this year. Yeah, you know, well, you know, I was I was rooting for the Bruins, but after that, I think I told you guys after the Bruins, I thought thought Toronto had a chance. Who would have thought the Rangers? Where the heck did they come from? You right. know? Oh. Igor. Who knows? You know, but they got the goalie. Man, you, that's it. Yeah, just a lot of good skating out there that past last year. Uh, those guys are. It's like crazy to think too uh, like how good that how good that division is even just like the eastern conference now right like it's uh, the west was a bit more spread out i think this year but the eastern conference was tight so are you always late for your tea times can't keep pace on the course they're standing over the ball way way too long thinking that this time it's going to be different quick pause from today's episode to bring you a note from today's sponsor the vincero collective if you're looking for the perfect accessory to keep you on time for a limited time only get 20 percent off plus free shipping site-wide support the pod with our exclusive code otsg at the vincero collective.com never be late for a tea time again um we kind of skipped over it if anybody's kind of listening and this is your first episode listening to um us by chance like on the screws podcast thank you thank you go over follow us at ots golf on instagram but um we're in conversation with bob winskowitz owner of uh founder of squares golf so shoe manufacturer we kind of skipped over it a little bit bob can you tell us um or anybody listening for the first time, they can, you know, definitely go back and listen to our past episodes. But um, if you might not have the time, you're in the car or whatever it is, kind of give us an idea of what Squares Golf is. Yeah, so, you know, the, the golf shoe, I would argue that is the most important piece of equipment. And I tell everybody that there are, you know, I think you'll agree, there are two connections in a game of golf, your feet to the ground and your hands to the club. And then I'd argue, which one is more important? Well, your arms follow your body. And so if your arms follow your body and balance and stability is, is a really, they're two different words. Balance is one and stability is another. And really balance is the key thing um, is, is that you've got to be balanced in order for your body to be stable. That means you're in control of your body. And so the single most out of years and years of testing, the single most uh, differentiating feature between a tour player and an amateur player is what they call postural control. And that is the consistency of a tour player to control their body throughout the golf swing. That means consistently be able to control it, repeat the swing. And that is the biggest difference. And that is the use of the ground, their balance stability. And squares was designed with a more squared off toe that your toes actually can sit naturally in the shoe. That will give you better balance and stability. Then we widen the base under the ball of your foot by four millimeter, four millimeters wider than any other golf shoe. And that too, that too will give you better balance and better stability. But now when you look at the total surface area coverage of the bottom of that shoe on the ground, it's more than any other shoe. So that will give you better energy exchange, better balance, better stability, which all translates into better postural control, which means better accuracy and distance. There's a lot of words there. Pretty much to sum it up, it's going to let you hit the ball farther and be yeah. more balanced and be more connected to the ground. And uh, me and Mac have both found that to be extremely true with, uh, with the amount of torque you can get compared to another shoe and how much – connection you have with that ground because of where those uh where those spikes are located i'm just uh i'm just going through something here bob sorry to cut you off so my golf spy three years in a row number one most stable golf shoe they voted number one most stable golf shoe correct Th that is correct well actually uh, the speed the speed model yeah 
Right. That is, well, let, let me clear. Um, Golf Digest was three years in a row, one of the best. And my golf spy this year picked, uh, selected spe our, our speed shoe right. is the third best rated overall golf shoe out of 30 models they tested. Okay. Yeah. And so that, that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask shoe. you about. Yep. So uh, comfort sixth, which I actually thought was kind of hard to believe. And yeah, I thought it'd be way higher. Personally. Like, you know, I thought it would be like up there with, you know, one or two, whoever the, you know, one, two or three is. I kind of thought that, you know, comfort and stability would go together. Um, so that was a bit shocking because I've worn some very comfortable golf shoes. And uh, that's one thing I've told like the guys that play my league. There's quite a few guys interested in them. Um, I've got the redneck version, which is awesome. So thanks for sending those over. But like those are a hit. And that's the thing I've said to guys is uh, quality and um you know, I, I kind of go back to your point of being able to use the ground force reaction and all those things like as a repetitious, like Bryce and I, are, our games are very similar and trying to be able to do that over and over and over again to create, you know, shooting a 73 or 74 or 75 over and over and over again is very difficult for golfers, right? I'm finding that to be the diff most difficult part of my game. My handicap is going up and down like a roller coaster, right? So I'm getting a bit off topic, but one of the things I was saying is like, or thinking is the stability with the shoe is something that definitely does help. And that's one of the things that I've said to the guys that I played with is I don't know if it gives me more yardages because, or yardage, because I'm not kind of set up on like a track man or a rap soda or anything like that at mm -hmm. the time. I feel more stable in the shoe. I can speak to that. I feel like it is the most comfortable shoe I've worn and it is the most quality shoe I've worn. Um, you know, there might be like flashier shoes. I got a pair of like Jordan 22s. Like they look awesome, yeah, right? Yeah, like it's yeah, like, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard to compare the look of them to a shoe like that. And I think you understand that, but like purposefully the, the purpose that the shoe is doing for the golfer, it is impressive. And I can kind of speak to that. And a lot of like the response, it looked like when I was going through some of the, the responses from the guys who tested it out on the, my golf spy, uh, like panel was, yeah, it takes you like a little bit to get over the square or whatever it might be the way that it, you know, kind of looks or feels on your foot, but then obviously they get to the point where it's the most stable, like the most stable shoe in golf, right? I think they're very consistent. I think the consistency aspect, like you, they're never going to, well, rarely going to slip on you, I guess. And like, you know what they're going to do every swing. Like there's no, like yeah. where the spikes are positioned and stuff. They're so consistent and uh, you just put so much trust in them. I, I want to, you bring up a really good point because it, you know, when it comes to, you know, golf footwear, there are things that that people will say, you know, for instance, you, you take a lightweight mesh shoe that you can hold by the heel and hold by the toe and twist it. And it's more like a, a sneaker like shoe. And people will say, well, it's more comfortable. Now, I can prove to you, I can tell you that, well, the proof is out there that those things create, those shoes create more fatigue. Because if you can hold a shoe by the heel and toe and twist it, that means your foot can move in that shoe. If you're in a side heel lie, your foot is going to shift in that shoe. And it's the same when you walk. If that shoe was not one with the foot, it's going to create more fatigue. So we looked at all of this stuff. But to your point earlier, Matt, you know, we were, look, we've been out there for, for less than three years now. And, you know, we beat out, there were two brands ahead of us in that My Golf Spy. We were off by number two by a half a point. We're off by number one by a point and a half. So, you know, uh, there was no Under Armour. There was no Echo before us. There was no Nike before us. I mean, there was a Footjoy brand and an Adidas model, 360 and the Tor Alpha in front of us. And the rest of the brands were behind us. So I look at it that way, that, you know, here we are three years into it. And I think people are really starting to see the performance benefits of the shoes. Mm -hmm. Well, and then another thing was the elements factor, which I actually really like because I play golf at a lot of different times. So the elements rating helps us determine whether a shoe is going to be a good fit for the rough weather, uh, rough weather on the course. Uh, essentially, like pretty much what it's saying is if you're a dew sweeper, you're playing really hot conditions, dry conditions, whatever it may be, sandy, um, rainy, two year waterproof uh, warranty should be fine wearing the shoe even if you're a dew sweeper is kind of how it wraps it up right and that's one of the things that i felt i know you did the video bob where you know you're submerging half your foot in the water and and it is completely waterproof um i've worn it like a few times out early in the year and up here in canada it can get pretty uh can get pretty nasty and like never a drop right so yep. um that was one of the things that i 
you know, I saw that fifth and I was like, I don't know if there's a shoe that's going to be any better that I put on my foot golf wise. That's going to keep me any more dry. Um, but the thing I wanted to ask you about was traction. So traction, you guys finished 14 out of 30. And one of the things Bryce just mentioned, and one of the things that we've spoke with Terry Hashimoto in the past and like Nick Bradley. So thanks for those connections, Bob. But like, you know, you guys have put in a ton of science on where those spikes go. Um, how stable, the, like, I guess the question I'm, I have is how can you be first in stability and 14th in traction? It's kind of a weird yeah, you know, I, I, I guess I look at it this way is that I am I was very pleased at where we finished and we got voted number one stable shoe because stability in the golf swing is paramount. Right. And I looked at the traction part of it. And I think it's um, you know, I, I think what happens in that is that, you know, depending on who's testing the shoe and what elements, you know, it could be a variety of elements. I don't know if it was a static test, you know, one person, one area, whether it was a mat, whether it was turf, it was this or that, you know, because I'll tell you that, you know, our system that we developed is we looked at the highest amount of pressure exerted on the bottom of your feet and where those regionalized spots are. Then we placed a cleat and then we supplement it with what we call traction loves. And I look at other shoes that were in that study that are basically a spikeless shoe. They just have the nubs. Right. And, um, and I look at that and I said, you know, there's a reason why Ben Hogan had an extra cleat put in the bottom of his right foot and the ball of his foot. It was called the 13th cleat. And the reason is, is because it gives you that connection to the ground. And that's what we did is we looked at those points and we deployed the cleat. So, you know, when it comes to traction, I would put the shoe up against any other shoe out there. But I would too. Point, if I'm going to accept the, you know, the fact that we finished third and and the number one stable shoe, I, I guess I'm not going to criticize the. Yeah. You know, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Like yeah, if yeah. I, like I would totally walk that back if it didn't sound like I was supporting it. I actually thought that that would be the second best category. Yeah. That you would be. I thought that you would have been marked like that would have stability was number one. I thought that, you know, and you were number three in overall, um, number five in elements, number six in comfort. I actually thought that traction would have been the second best category yeah. overall that you were in. Right. So, yeah. I'm um, with you. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even so on the elements, you bring up a good thing in the elements, you know, when you think about this, you're out playing, if it's raining, you know, a lot of guys don't like to play it for rain. I can care less, but you know, if it's raining, the, the rain is coming straight down on the top of your foot. And if you look in our shoe, we sew, the tongue on both sides of it all the way up the shoe and it's mm -hmm. called a gusseted tongue and that's probably in footwear making probably an extra 60 cents a pair to do that and a lot of people just don't do it <clears throat> we did it because if sand gets on the top or it rains it works its way in the shoe so that's why we can say look in all elements um you know this shoe is going to perform and your feet aren't going to get wet yeah and i think like I play, I've mentioned, I play Port Hope. I'm right on the water here. And it's kind of like an older, kind of like, well, it's actually like the fifth or sixth oldest track in Canada, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, like I walk around and on a nice day, like, you know, I can be wearing whatever shoes, but if it's not a good day, like my feet would be, you know, covered in stuff. Like they're just like, you mm -hmm. know, plus I don't hit the ball all that straight. So I'm kind of wandering off on, a, you know, into the rough and stuff like that too. Right. So it's just one of those nice things, be able to kind of, peel the shoes off and like the foot's dry the foot's clean yep. and you can you know kind of go on with the rest of your day and you don't have to uh stink at the clubhouse when you're collecting your money from yeah. the money games right so <laughs> or, or donating uh, whatever <laughs> whatever whatever max shows up that day right so uh, bob i wanted to go into the new mesh version of uh, of your shoes of the speed and um did you compromise any of that putting the mesh in any of the waterproofing or any of the uh structural um integrity of it yeah, so so again, that's the challenge with the mask. I'm glad you brought it up. So one of the things I, I firmly believe in a golf shoe is, is first and foremost, it's got to have the structure. Mm -hmm. You can't be able to twist a golf shoe because there's so much force and energy exchange with the ground that you definitely need that structure. So when I was looking at mesh early on, I said I wasn't going to do it because we, we really couldn't get it right in terms of at keeping the structure and then providing a lightweight, breathe, more breathable material. 
And so the key was really to give something a little more lightweight, a little more breathable to people that play in the Phoenix, Arizona, or the, the Florida in the middle of the, the summer. And so the one thing we, we didn't want to compromise on was structure. So you cannot twist that shoe. If you hold it in the heel and until you can't twist it. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is it is not waterproof. It is not waterproof. We decided to go that way to make it a little more breathable, more lightweight than our performance speed shoe. So, you, you know, you give and take and that's that's footwear making, you know, as you as you reduce structure, you reduce weight. All right. And, you know, if you can reduce the upper the, the, the upper material, the weight of the upper material certainly can bring down the weight of the shoe. But what we decided to do is to provide the structure and the breathability and something that, um, you know, we've put out there. And I got to tell you what, we've sold out about four or five of the sizes now. And nice. I mean, people have really taken to it. I'm really, so the, really pleased. The base of the shoe is nothing's changed, correct? You've just put That's a correct. different upper on top? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the same comfort, the same playability. We did testing on it in terms of stability, and 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 we saw no distance losses, nothing. It was right. it was great. Yep, we're very pleased with it. It's in the Freedom model as well. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. you know, it's interesting in the in the ladies model too. That seems to be one of it's. It's really it's a it's achieved our number one best selling ladies model now, mm -hmm. and it was interesting because a lot of women have you know foot issues because you know cramming their toes in those high heels and they develop bunions and you know they they get you know as you, you know that that knuckle on your toe comes up and uh and and, and basically what happens is they've got to have more flexibility so that mesh gives them on the top of the shoe a little more flexibility so instead of having a good performance shoe like uh, our speed model with that upper material they went to more of a, they like the mesh shoe. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things too, naturally. Like if you're looking for a mesh shoe, you're probably not looking for something that's waterproof. Right. So I, for the most part, right. If you're, if you're looking for something that's breathable that you want to wear, like in the really like, you know, Arizona heat or whatever you're kind of talking about desert heat, you're probably able to give up a little bit of, you know, the waterproof feature or whatever, without sacrificing any of the integrity of the shoe, yeah, right? So it's water resistant, which means, you know, if it rains, it's going to pipe. But if you stick your foot in a puddle, I mean, it's going to mm, it'll, right. it'll get you, you know, but uh, yeah. Yep. All right, Bob. So I want to transition into something that I've been thinking about. Bryce, you good there? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So something that's been on my mind a little bit, um, everybody's mind in the golf world really is, uh like live golf right so things are you know they just signed six players two of them being top players in the world in uh you know cam smith and neiman and you know john daly when it when live kind of was first surfacing not first surfacing but like starting to sign some players and phil had moved over john daly was kind of outspoken he's one of your ambassadors uh he wanted to go join the tour he wanted to give it a shot and um you know obviously nick faldo's there right so as a business owner, you know, that kind of endorses these guys, does that, uh, uh, does that chain, like, I guess, what are your thoughts on live? Let's just kind of start there and then we'll yeah. let it uh, unfold. You know, it, 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 it's really, it, it's somewhat of a difficult conversation, you know, cause people seem to be, it's kind of like politics or either in one camp or the other, you know, there's very few independents it seems here, but you know, I look at this and when I first heard about it, I said, what's wrong with it? What, why is it bad for the game of golf? But I think what happened from that point was, I will tell you that in my humble opinion as a business owner, that this could have been handled differently. This could have been handled much differently by the top two guys could have gotten a room and worked this out. They could have coexisted. Um, and I believe that I believe that the PGA could have could have went in and demanded certain things that the players play 17, 18 events that, you know, like they eventually did said, you know, play 18 and 19 events. You can go play in the live tour or play in other ones and give you permission to do it. And as long as that doesn't compete with our events, that's cool. And maybe, Hey, Norman, give me six to 7% of the, uh, you know, the revenue and right. uh, we'll make this happen. Now, what's bad about that? Why, why couldn't something like that have happened? 
I, my, I, suspe I suspect it's personalities at the top. Uh, you know, yeah. I look at what's happened and I look at this and I, I listen to the media and I listen to pundits out there and they take, you know, one side or the other. And I say, you know, what about us as fans? I don't think too many of us as fans have been asked what we think about, it, you know, and, and I look at the, you know, what makes up the PGA tour, all those personalities, you've got Brooks Coppy, you got Mickelson, you got, you know, DeChambeau, you've got Garcia, Cam Smith. Um, you know, you got Cam Smith. You've got all yeah. these personalities that when you watch it, you love to hate these guys. You have villains, you have the, mm -hmm. the, the popular guys, you know, you have the Ian Poulters that is always right there. He's, you know, yes, yes. And you look at, oh, you know, on the right. And, and that's what makes this sport so great, you know, for, for people to have a forum to go out and play golf and make a lot of money, that should be the case. And if you think about it, if you're play for the, the NHL, you play for Major League Baseball, you go sign your contract for 5, 10, 20 million, 100 million. You know, in baseball, you get that money. You don't have to worry about your future. And, and at the end of your five years, you know, somebody else is going to be out there bidding for you. And maybe you only make 30 million, but now you're at 130 million. You yep. know, in golf, it's not that way. And when people ask me about, well, they do it for the money, damn right they do it for the money. They don't, you know, they go and they practice, and you know what it takes to go out and play good golf. They spend time, money, effort. They're gonna pay a caddy, a coach, fly around. Their parents give up so much for these kids to play, and they want to go out and make a lot of money. And so, you know, when Daly goes to Norman and says, hey, I want to play, he went after the money, you know? Mm -hmm. Mickelson, I, I mean, you know, it's, I, I don't blame him. I don't blame him for going and playing for the money. But you look at that tour now, and they got some pretty damn good players. They got some players now. Yep. And I hate to see it. You know what I hate to see, guys? I hate to see tour players, Ryder Cup teammates sitting there talking trash about each other now, yeah. you know, and that's what i hate that 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 should have been prevented and it's just it 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 makes me sick to my stomach it really does uh, it's it's a gentleman's game and always has been and uh i wish they could work it out i really do well yeah, like yeah that's, i kind of go, go ahead, ahead Bryce. go no go i was ahead, gonna go say ahead. yeah i kind of agree i mean we're kind of me and mac i know are kind of both on similar sides i mean i think we think it's good like we're we don't uh, hate the whole idea of it it just could have gone gone a little smoother and kind of could have been handled in a little a uh, little better of a way that's all well i think yeah like when it first populated like when it first was released there were some a lot of negative connotation and context with live right and like everybody was hearing that we're all golf fans we want to protect like the game and whatever right you know and as things develop and you know players want to go play and they want to try different things you know then people beat up on it as like a 50 hole 54 hole exhibition and you know incentivized contracts which by the way i don't think incentivized contracts are a bad thing i know what you're saying bob like you know you get paid up front and then you you know you play for four or five years whatever it is kind of like the nfl the nba stuff like that all of those contracts have incentives built into them right and that's kind right. of how live has formed a lot of their contracts and people are like taking it the wrong way saying okay you know, for instance, Bryce made a hundred mil and if he wins an event, that money like technically comes out of what he's already been paid and there's a different like structure with how all of those things align, but like there's nothing wrong with incentivized contracts. It makes players mm -hmm. you know, if you go pay a guy a hundred million years or a hundred million dollars, you know, to go play for a few years there, like what makes him want to grind on the range every day, right? And I think that's been one of the things that people have gotten hung up on is like well, they have nothing to play for anymore, but they do. You just have to look into the contracts and you have to kind of like understand that it's just a different form, right? One thing I definitely yeah, want to yeah. see is, you know, there's no official world golf rankings. And I think that that is going to hurt the game overall right now. Cam Smith is undeniably a top three player in the world right now. And to not have that recognized is something that is very, very difficult for fans to be able to process. All right, we made it through nine, and this glizzy is brought to you by our friends over at Manscaped, manscaped.com. You can go over, check out the Ultra Premium Collection, or anything that you need to not suffer through the back nine here. Using the promo code OTSGOLF, you will get 20% off plus free shipping. And maybe you'll go low on the back. Thank you for supporting the episode. Thank you for supporting the pod. Manscaped.com, 20% off using the promo code OTSGOLF. Free shipping right to your door. 
enjoy the pod. I agree with you. I, I think, you know, there's other events around the world that, that, you know, pay a lot of a parents fee money and it's kind of an exhibition in that particular country. Um, and, uh, look, I think, um, I don't, I, I don't think it's bad for the game. I think the people around the game who are the business people have kind of made it bad, you know, made it, made it, uh, hostile. Hostile. Yeah. That's, that's the way to say it. Hostile, you know, contentious and, and it, and it doesn't need to be, you know, and again, I think that if the PGA went out and said, look, you know, we'll allow you to do this, um, you know, have eight events, nine events. Uh, we'll let a guys play as long as they pay 18 events with us because they're concerned about, you know, watering down some of these secondary yeah. events and uh, give me, give me seven or 8% of the, you know, the revenues. And if they fail in five, 10, 20 years, whatever, the PGA is none the worse, you know? Um, well, like we've seen that with like the XFL and we've seen that with so many other um, like agencies that have come in and tried to like, you know, create another sports league there and it might come and go and there's a lot of money backing live and i think that the structure of it is kind of more similar to like you know think about vladimir Guerrero jr like when he's going to sign a new contract it's just a contract it's just going to be like open the book how much money do you want yeah. and then if you hit you know 40 dingers this year you're going to get paid x number of dollars if you hit 50 you're going to be paid this no like x number of dollars so that's kind of like how some of the contracts are formed really they're all different like yep. phil phil's like to my knowledge phil was paid a couple hundred million and he's kind of earned that right like he's a top five six seven player ever to play the game right so for him to get that money up front um if it's being funded that kind of makes sense right he's going to be a huge he's the second biggest name on the planet when it comes to golf right and we saw that with the pip last year the yeah. player incentive yeah. program like tiger woods won it but um Phil was like right there, right? And then like there's a huge drop off even after those two guys. So I think that, you know, having contracts structured differently is it's just kind of different for us to see in golf. And we see a lot of this, right? Like when Terrell Hatton won a wore a hoodie to the BMW a few years ago, people were like, What is this guy doing wearing a hoodie to the BMW? And now you see it every week, right? It's just kind of like, yep. you know, I wear a hoodie, I'm wearing one right now. We wanna, you know, you wanna wear one on the course, right? It's kind of like Everything just changes. I think it was a little bit difficult for people to see, but there is a way to coexist. And it did seem like, you know what, the Live Tour is kind of a couple older guys and stuff like that, but they got players now, right? Like there's there's players there. They would be, you know, I know on four play, they were kind of joking, like we want to see a, a Ryder Cup, like Live versus PGA Tour, because everybody loves to villainize, like we were talking mm -hmm. about. And, you know, villainize the live tour versus, you know, and Greg Norman versus John, Jay Monahan and stuff like that. And, you know, it, the tours are not close yet, but look at how fast they've grown. Right. And I yeah, think yeah. we if we're having this discussion, you know, next time you come on, it's going to be a little bit closer, a little bit closer and a little bit closer. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you, Mac, would you would you like to see that the Greg Norman versus the Monahan? I, I'd love to see it. I, I would mean, love to see it. We're all, I said know, a couple episodes yeah. ago, I said, anytime I'm, I'm tuning in, I'm there. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I bet in golf that would be one of the highest rated, rated things because, you know, that's what I think is missing in this is us as fans, not necessarily people in the industry who do podcasts yeah. to promote the game, who sell product in there, is just as a fan, you know, I want to see these different personalities out there. Yeah, I, I want to see everybody get along. I want to see good golf, fun golf. Um, and, you know, you take, take, for instance, the waste management. I mean, you look at that par three hole in there. Yeah. Everybody's having a grand old time and, you mm -hmm. know, you're not going to see that Augusta, yeah. you know, but you might probably see something like that in a live tour event. But, but again, I just want them to work it out. That's all I'm saying. In, in my opinion, the game. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. In my opinion, if they're ever going to do that, it needs to be as soon as possible when there's still that hostility. So you get that kind of hockey beat the crap out of each other mentality. Because I think that <laughs> yeah. would just add so yeah. much emotion and so much um, 
just exciting golf to watch. What is it? Fe- February is the waste management. I say get the stadium hole. Get a oh, could you know, you imagine like five those best two? PGA get a guys, go five to the best live guys. Yeah. Holy, get Plus that on top rock. of that, go to the WWE. Get a cage. Put yeah. Greg Norman and Jay Monahan in there, and then yeah, no, no, definitely hey, listen, don't. Uh, two smart guys like those guys. I, I get them in a room and say, "Listen, we're not coming out till we figure this out." And and uh, you know, like I say, it's just uh, yeah, I, I I hate to see this in the game, and I wish I wish the players had also stepped up, you know, and said, "Look, you know, we can coexist. There's a lot of money out there for all of us." Yeah, uh, maybe there's some rotation out there on that live. Who knows, you know, but. They are definitely both like very intelligent businessmen, right? Like I remember reading a stat in 2018, I think Jay Monahan made less money than Brooks Kepka and more money than everybody else on the PGA Tour, right? So he's obviously doing something right. He's he's getting money. Like people like to kind of, you know, bring up those stats. And I think that they're both very intelligent if we got them in a room, like you said, and, you know, said, how can we coexist? And, and to be honest, I think a lot of PGA Tour players like when you think of like rory he's kind of the face of the pga tour right now um jordan spieth a couple of guys who are maybe a little bit more outspoken that are still there um the idea was that they wanted to coexist under the pga tour blanket right they didn't want to see players leave and i think that that was maybe a misstep and as soon as some players decided to walk you know now you're kind of your, floodgates are open it's a very yeah. divisive it was a very divisive time between the two tours right so i don't know yeah i think yeah that's i would have loved to have heard through the media that they come out and said you know we tried to work this out it just didn't happen but mm-hmm. never heard that yeah never heard that it, it, it seems like they didn't even try didn't even uh get to a discussion yeah so again we're in a conversation with bob winskwitz owner of squares golf and I wanted to ask you, so we're, we're kind of talking about the live tour versus PJ tour, all of this kind of stuff. But now as a business owner, as uh, the founder of squares golf, when you're, let's use like a guy like Sep, obviously we don't have to get into any numbers or anything, but you're looking at a guy like Sep or somebody else that you might've signed under your, under your wing, under the squares wing or the squares blanket. And if they decide to move to like the live tour, if they decide to, if Sep decides to go over there or one of your other athletes or whatever it may be, how does that kind of, um, change a contract or an endorsement um you know what does that do for the brand do you pivot in that way like obviously there's not as much money being invested visually into the live tour right now it's like based through youtube there's not as many tv deals and stuff like that does that amend your kind of uh, relationship that you would have with an athlete you know i i don't think anybody contemplated that when you sign contracts until most recently because i think there is you know, there's got to be some consideration of that at this point, because, you know, again, you don't have the TV time, you don't have that kind of visibility. So I would think there'd be some consideration, you know, lend it to that type of situation with the live tour. Um, I, I don't hear of anybody pulling right now, recently pulling any contracts, particularly with the peak guys that went over there. I think manufacturers are still in the wait and see phase. You know, it's not that we're going to support, you know, the PGA Tour less or, you know, it just if they choose to go over there and we have a contract with them, you know, behind the scenes, things could change in terms of the arrangement. But, you know, um, I, I don't think you'll see people just cancel contracts. I think everybody's still wearing, you know, and playing the same clubs and the balls and right. things of that nature. Uh And I haven't heard any people getting canceled at this point. Yeah, I guess that's kind of on the player uh, as well to to understand that there might be some amendments made if they go. And and typically, like, you know, like HV3 said it the best, which I loved. Like, he came out and said, look, like, I'm going to make a bunch of money in in other ways. And I'm going to be able to help so many people with this money. And my foundation and stuff, right? So, and he said, obviously, it's financially incentivized, right? So, that might impact some of your sponsorships in other ways. Um, I don't think that was the only angle I was trying to go with, Bob. But, like, say you have, um, you know, Cameron Tringale and you're looking at him or any other player that's over on the Live Tour right now and you're thinking, okay, like, we want to get them in some square shoes. We want to – but are you hesitant right now, like, as a business owner with, you know, maybe not as many eyes watching the Live Tour currently? 
No, no. Um, I guess I'm an optimist thinking that at some point this will be worked out. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but again, I still see, you know, I hear numbers that, uh, you know, their fan base has picked up people attending the, the, you know, the events. I know they're cutting deals and ticket prices would live, but you know, they're just trying to attract people to come out and watch the event. So, you know, that type of visibility is always good. Uh, I don't think I would shy away from it if somebody like, uh, I mean, pick a guy out there. I'm not picking anybody specific, but say, uh, I don't know, uh, Brooks Cop could come and said, hey, I want to wear squares out there. I wouldn't tell him no. I'd mm -hmm. get him some shoes and let him go play with it. That's his choice. Yeah, I guess it's all just based on like, you know, I think of even things with like sponsorships with the podcast. It's all based on like, I think it's called CSM, which is like the amount of... Uh, whatever it is per views essentially right and and kind of you guys would have to look at that and then you know work out a deal there and like really it could be quite lucrative for yourself as a business owner to get in early right you might be mm -hmm. able to kind of get in get a contract set up for a year or two or whatever it may be and they're gonna have a tv deal like it's a, very fast right so there's there's no such thing as bad publicity no no. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going out there and make a statement. I'm not sitting here saying, you know, the PGA is a bunch of idiots. I'm not saying that Norman's an idiot. I'm not saying that. Uh, what I am saying is that, look, two smart guys could have gotten a room, and I hope they do at some point and work this out. And as a fan, I like to watch golf. I like to watch good golf. I understand it was a great event in Boston in terms of playoff and mm -hmm. and all of that. And, uh, you know, I, I it's it's <coughs> – it's sad to see these players now be isolated here and another group over here. And that, uh, you know, when it comes to Ryder Cups or when it comes to other events, the inclusion of these personalities now are not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things, like, I, I was listening to the 4Play pod, and, and they're pro PGA for sure. Um, yeah. Definitely pro PGA uh, pod right now anyway. Um, you know, Kevin Kisner goes to live, and they're probably pro live. But yeah, right. it's, uh, it's, you know, and they were saying – and don't get me wrong, they did make a very good point here, and it was pretty much Riggs brought it up. Trent was discussing it a little bit. And the idea was that, um, you know, we saw DJ make that, and we talk about, like, vil villainizing players, right? So we got two players in a playoff. We got Will Zell, Torres, and Seb Straka, and they're kind of going, you know, shot for shot, and, you know, there's Zell Torres' balls on the edge of the cup and or edge of the water, and then Seb puts his in the water, and we see all that drama, right? So we see, you know... I don't know how many players, three or four were in the playoff the other day. DJ, DJ makes a 50 something, 60 footer that was going 10, 20 feet past feet the hole. Past, yeah. yeah. And all the guys are super happy, right? And they're all just like, <laughs> they're all just like screaming, cheering, like really happy because, you know, DJ's won, but you wouldn't see that like on the PGA Tour. So I guess that's oh. kind of where I thought is they made a very good point is where they have to kind of pivot and there's a lot of very, um, you know, but it's very new. Everybody's like very new to the tour. They're really enjoying the tour. I know they treat caddies very, very well there. Um, we've heard it from a couple and I know there's been a lot of posts. So that's kind of like one of the things that I just think of is there might need to be a pivot and a restructuring of how they can create a competitive atmosphere. Um, the team event is definitely, I think, helping that, but it can also lend to, you know, maybe a little bit less competitive nature with, you know, one player playing the other, right? We saw, like like we said, with Sepp and, and Zalatoris, it was like, those guys are just trying to kill the other one to win, right? And, like, of yeah, course, they yeah. shake hands when they're done, but the competitive, you know, spirit was there. And, you know, they're both killers. They both wanted to win, and Zalatoris got him that day, and Sepp's going to get him the next time, right? It's just, you know... We, I haven't seen something like that where a bunch of guys are like really cheering. Maybe at the Masters when Rory and Morikawa made those like hole outs from the bunkers. Yeah, yeah. But those yeah. guys weren't winning though, and they knew they were not going to win the tournament, right? So I don't know. I guess that was kind of my you thought. No, I, I, I have a tendency to agree with that. That I think uh, the boys on four play, I, I agree with that. I, I, that's one area that I scratch my head at too. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I know these guys are by nature very competitive. You know, it's probably started when they were young, very young, um, you know, playing all these events that you don't lose that competitive spirit. And you just don't say, well, I don't care about this putt or I don't, you know, I, I don't know about that. But I but I do I, I, I do have a sense that that um, 
it, it's that the competitive nature of it just may be short of what uh, or maybe short of what you'll you see in a PGA Tour event on Sundays. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's part of like the incentivized contract, right? So a lot of guys might like Phil might get 200 mil up front, put in his pocket, whatever it is. Phil is Phil, right? There's no other Phil in the world. Like it's different. He's different, right? So most of the other contracts, it sounds like, you know, you're paid a portion and you get a portion for winning, right? So I think that as more contracts come out like that, I think, you know, the guys will be more inclined to want to win. And, you know, everybody's doing very financially well right now. And I think as, you know, they get a bit more players and as things go on and as, you know, more players start to win, I think it'll naturally, like, they're so, athletes are so habitual. Like, Bryce, you would know it. Like, you you want to win. Like, you'll do whatever it takes to win. Oh, it doesn't it's... matter what level, what level you're at, right? So I think it'll get there. I think it'll just kind of, you know, breed and f- evolve that way. But, you know, we'll see. I guess that could be a different look. And a lot of people might like that because it's a lot of fun to watch. It's kind of like watching the waste management with, you know, Joel Damon and uh, and yeah. Harry Higgs out there taking their shirts off, right? Both those guys <laughs> yeah. are having a good time. Yeah, but, Shea, uh, yeah, Shea won't play card games with me anymore because I get so competitive. <laughs> I believe Jersey. it. I believe it. All right. So, Bob, we got Seb Straka, uh, won the 2022 Honda Classic. Five straight cuts before uh, missed cuts, so kind of a bit of a downward uh, spiral. So I don't know if you watched that at that time, or I don't want to say downward downward spiral because playing he struggled. Well PG, he was just struggling yeah. a little bit yeah. before coming se- uh, second at the FedEx St. Jude. Two weeks later, T seven at the Tour Championship. So right now, I think everybody can agree he was going in uh, what number ninth, ninth going into the. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Yep. So. Yep. One right. of the hottest yeah. players on tour right now. Squares are definitely getting noticed. Do we uh, do we have anybody else in the works? Any other players in in conversation with her right now? Yes, but as you can imagine, I can't really talk about it. But uh, <laughs> last time yeah. you had just you had just kind of uh, just sort of unveiled Calc at the time. So let's yeah, hoping we get it. Let's hoping we could get somebody out of you. I. It's interesting too. I've had people reach out to me. You know, we've had through agents reach out and said, hey, can you send so-and-so a couple of pairs of shoes? I'd like to try them. And uh, that's happened recently. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, there's, 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 there's guys out there that their contracts are, are coming up and they're looking around. And, and now it's an opportunity for us to have them try the shoe. And if they try it, they like it, then, you know, we can talk further. But, yeah, I see us in 2023 expanding our base. and nice yeah i'm excited about it so right, a lot of new models coming out a lot of exciting models a lot of fun models coming out okay we were, we were gonna go there a little bit too but uh so right now we got sep we got jd faldo mark calcavecchia anybody else currently on the roster yeah fred funk is wearing the shoes out there and oh, nice. no agreement no contract he loves his shoes and uh he's out there wearing them yep. yeah his son's up on the uh pj tour canada right now so good player oh really too. very good that. player too yeah very good player um awesome that's great that's really good now i did want to ask you before we went i don't know if you have anything else bryce that you want to throw in there but uh new models anything anything changing significantly for i know you again i'm asking you questions that you can't give us the answer to completely but um anything anything changing with any of the models quite a bit yeah yeah we come out the whole new line i think uh you, you picked up on it earlier mac uh is sep was wearing a brand new shoe at uh at the tour championship in the bmw and if you go back and look at the tape it's uh it's a new model that uh, we, we tested out, prototyped it, sent him. He loved the shoes and, uh, we tweaked the shoe a little. I don't want to give up, uh, give our marketing campaign up a little early here, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, uh, let's just say he started wearing it prior to the BMW mm-hmm. one week before. And, uh, you know, he goes at BMW plays great, plays good at the, you know, the, the tour championship and, um, yeah, so we've got a whole new line, and I think I was, you know, showing you guys earlier the shoe. It's nice, clean, classy. Mm-hmm. We're also doing a couple, one in the fall that I'm really proud of. I'm really excited about is that you know, being a an owner of a company, you get to do, you, you get to choose the direction, you know, and come out with shoes. And I'm very passionate about my faith and uh, as a Christian. And so we're launching this nice. shoe here. It's called the 316 John 316 shoe. We've got 316 on the heel. And we're doing this in concert with uh, Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, uh, and 
uh, what's called Samaritan's Purse. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a charity that donates to people, people in need. And they do something called Operation Christmas Child. Mm -hmm. And they send these shoe boxes out to kids all over the world. And so for every pair sold, we are going to donate uh, $18 a pair, which means that three children will get those boxes. So uh, it's something we're going to do a press release on. We're going to promote heavily on our website and ask everybody to take a look. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. We're we're happy to do uh, do anything we can to spread the word. I, I know, uh, like I was saying, the the pod's been rolling along here. Bryce and I were talking about it the other day. Things have been really, uh, really kind of, you know, catching on for us too, which has been great. Um, so anything we can do. I know our first chat, you had the the breast cancer awareness shoes. I know they got stuck in a container somewhere in the middle of the yeah, ocean. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, it's always nice when you can, uh, you know personalized and you know put some of your faith into into your business as well right so anything we can do to to support bob we're always happy to do so it's uh it's definitely something that we're passionate about our idea here has always been to kind yep. of help support brands and you've always been uh you know very loyal to us we appreciate that that's uh that's pretty cool that's pretty it's cool pretty to see, easy you know? to do and you love the products so. yeah you know what guys i tell you it, it's you know the people listening to this you, you know you guys are really helping us grow the game you guys are bringing people on you're entertaining you you you, you talk golf and other topics you know we could talk hockey and mm -hmm. live we could talk this and that and it's not you know just just 100 golf but that's what this game night and game needs is is people to you know to talk it up to to bring people in, in into the game and keep them here and uh, what you guys do is really important so important to everything we do here well it's kind of cool how like you you can connect with anybody so i i was talking to bryce the other day and i said uh bryce i golf today in my men's league with one of your old coaches so not his coach directly but he was a goal, uh, goalie coach in Sault Ste. Marie uh Dan Stewart and he is now the developmental goalie coach with the St. Louis Blues this year so you know Bryce and I have always kind of said it's good to get people and like a couple weeks ago I had Sean Lindo on toted him as the most muscular golfer on the planet he's like 270 pounds like solid muscle Jeez. and you know he's shooting like 90 so you know, I was saying to, to Bryce, like, oh, we got to get Stewie on. Like, we got to get – and I guess send him a message or whatever. He said, yeah, I'd love to hop on with you guys. And golf might not be his first sport, but he loves it to death. And then we can, you know, catch a bit of a new audience with that are interested in kind of learning about, you know, the St. Louis Blues or NHL hockey and goalies and all of the different things that go with it, right? Sports are sports. Like, they're all connected. Yeah, you know, it's right? interesting. I'm doing a uh, – I, I got a call a couple of weeks ago from a, a guy named Dan Whitney who loves our shoes. And a lot of people don't know who Dan is. Dan is Larry, the Larry, the cable guy. And, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, he loves the shoes. And, uh, I, I got a, uh, out of the blue, got a call for a text message from Roger Clemens. And, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. sweet. And, uh, you, you know, it's interesting. You, you get on the phone with these guys and they're just uh, regular guys that love yep. golf. And, you know, they play in a lot of these celebrity events and, uh, you know, it, it, it's if you talk to them long enough, they'll never bring somebody like, you know, Roger will never bring up baseball. He just wants to talk about golf. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great for the game. Yeah, we've seen that with like quite a few people, you know, we've had like Cole Perfetti on and we were kind of just like talking about hockey. And it's like, you know, same thing for him. He's just kind of going like he's, you know, one of the youngest stars in the game right now playing for the Winnipeg Jets. And. You know, he's kind of going through it and like, yeah, yeah, hockey. And then we start talking golf and you kind of you see kind him of like, perks perks up. yeah, he perks up <laughs> a little bit. And he's like, yeah. And like, he's yeah, having, having some shoulder issues and stuff like that right now. But uh, yeah, he didn't get to play a whole lot, but it's just like, yeah, golf is like something kind of new to him and fascinating to him. He's been playing for a couple of years and, and, you know, it's kind of just such a great sport that you can go and we can meet people on the pod like we've done 97 straight episodes. So if you're listening to That's us at impressive. this point, yeah, thank you. Hit subscribe five-star rating all that good stuff it definitely helps get us into all those different algorithms and stuff but it's uh it's cool man you kind of go out and like i said i went out and i met stewie like playing men's league had never met him before and you get to go out and walk in a really nice park for four hours and get to know somebody right it's pretty awesome stuff yeah that is great that's the best part of this game is the people you meet yeah really yeah there's rarely a bad person on the golf course rarely yeah 
Yeah, I don't know, Corey, if you're listening to this part, you've broken like three putters this year, so I don't know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys in the league, thanks, Corey, for uh, always passing on your money. Appreciate it. But, um, you know, Bob, thanks so much, man. We love having you on. We got to do it again after uh, maybe Sepp's next win or the next person you uh, – next person you get on or if you're doing the um maybe we can get you back on and and we'll be like november i guess that you're doing we that, need right? a we need a mid-season ho- mid-hockey season catch-up for boston <laughs> yeah we do we gotta play some bets there you hockey know? pod eh? hockey pod yeah, i like it i like it that. and uh you guys gotta start planning now you gotta get that on the pga show this year yes. yeah we should do that yeah. where is it do you know it's our orlando orlando yeah. 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 yeah yeah and it's is it the last week of january Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think yep. so. Right. Yeah. It's so we got to get down there. Yeah. 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 This year might be a little bit. I had, a, I had a fresh one last year. This one might be a little bit easier to get down there and uh, make that happen. I know John Daly had a pretty good party that you invited us to. So I definitely uh, I definitely <laughs> think I got to make it next time. So but um, yeah, definitely, Bob, maybe we'll get you back on when you guys are doing the, uh, I, I, you know, your your 316 version of your shoe, whatever it is. Or, yeah, just a hockey pod. That might be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Is that in my ball and of course I tee up? I lose a ball and I re up. I miss a fairway, I probably end up in the ocean or maybe the beach. And I'm on a par five and I'm finna go reach it. Second was blind, I see it. Feel like it might be an average. I was working scenario.